want anything bad enough, don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it. You find a way. Boxing King Media in association with the Riyadh season. KD, part of Team AJ from Day Dot. Um, a big fight. In fact, before we talk about the fight, you're looking smooth and tell me what beard are you using? Ooh, you know what? My girl got me one beard oil for Christmas. I'll, eat, I'll find the name and I'll send it to you, but it's, it's, doing, it's doing some nice stuff. Looks good. You're going to have to share that with us. We're at Knockout Chaos, a mad name for a boxing event, but I think I, uh, His Excellency has chosen the name. I like the theme, Street Fighter. You like it? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Um, I'll do the spoiler here. I, I saw the plans for the theme um, quite early. All the, all the drawings and the marketing stuff was AJ Wilder and it looked sick. But I think we've got an ideal replacement in the fight poster with two beasts up there, so I can't complain. It's an interesting fight, but you know, just talk to me at what point was this fight presented to you guys? You know, was there any talk of still sticking with Wilder? Um, I'll be completely honest with you, no, there wasn't. I think straight after that night, I think the contract got ripped up. I, as it stood for us, we were meant to, we were headlining the event. We had signed a contract that week. We had got all the little things crossed off and there was two signatures from two fighters on the contract. And at the end of that night, I was, I was expecting Wilder to face off with AJ after he did what he did to Otto. So unfortunately that didn't go to plan and um, the next fight didn't materialize but I, I believe that same night slash the next morning this was presented as an option and it got presented to AJ just on a quick one oh what's your thoughts on fighting Francis he was like let's go if it makes sense you lot do what you do and if it makes sense let's go so here we are we obviously highlighted you know the walling fight a lot of people like predicted a close fight but it was far from that but this time the few people I've spoken to people are quite split about it Dominic Ingle who people love listening to his views he said to me yesterday this is a harder fight than Wallin that's interesting I think we're in the unknown unknown right now I feel like he's proved himself to have a second crack at the top of heavyweight boxing from his last performance but uh, I think the boxing the boxing team needs to put some respect on the sport and restore the order so that people don't think that it can be too close. I think Floyd did a good job putting Connor in his place. I think Tommy and Jake was a bit too close for the boxing sides like him, but here we go, we've got another opportunity. What do you make of some of the comments Ngannou said? You know, there was nothing really said in the press today, but in the build-up, he's suggested that AJ may not have a chin. But obviously, we've never seen AJ get knocked out. So, where do you think he's getting that from? Do you know what? I, um, I'll just be real with you. I think he, he like every other top athlete, has probably got a great team behind him. I think the socials don't reflect who the people are. Maybe the interviews. But look, it's fight talk. Not it's. I expect them to say something. There's battles that these fighters have amongst themselves, and but it, it, it's all for him. Let's let him see, innit? What's uh, you know, His Excellency suggested something in the before the press is saying that it basically sounded like if Fury beats Usyk and AJ beats Ngannou, they're going to fight each other next. There is not going to be no rematch in the Fury Usyk fight. That's what it sounded like. Can you enlighten us on that? Yeah, I think you interpreted it exactly the same way I did. I think the conversations, we're going to go and have a meeting after this to see what's what. But like I said, from AJ's perspective, only Francis matters right now. But let's see. I, I like the way they think. I like the forward thinking. I like the no time wasting. Like I said, that when the opportunities arise, you've got to be ready to take them. So let's see. And just a word on Derek James. Is, I know AJ mentioned him in the press. Is he playing any part in this build up now? Or if so, what role? I don't, I don't believe he will. I think we've had such a quick turnaround and off the success of the last one, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to roll straight back into training. Guard. How did the conversation go with Derek? Because surely you would have had to explain to him that you know, you're know you going in a different direction. Uh, I think, I, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't privy to the exact conversation. However, at the time of the first thing arising, like you know, we got the wall-in fight signed up very quickly. He was in the middle of 
ticking over down where he was. Derek had um, Ryan in camp and the logistics weren't going to work. So I feel like, look, they're both, um, Derek's an experienced trainer. He's not new to the sport, so he understands um, what the situation is. So I know that there'll be no ill feeling towards anyone and the show just has to go on. You left on good terms. That's what I wanted to uh, get out there. Yeah, I think that, look, it's boxing, it's sport, so I don't think you can take things personally. I think that from every aspect, whether it's a fighter leaving a coach or doing his camp elsewhere or this or that, you've kind of always got to do what's best for yourself. So in this situation, this seems what's going to be best for AJ. For Derek, it seems to be what's best for him um, with what he's getting up to, even the same as with management and fighters. If like You've just got to do what's best for yourself. Last question, KD. You as a fan looking from outside in, um, what fight are you potentially looking forward to these guys making? Because it sounds like any, everything's on the table now. You know what? I, make one. Make one. Yeah. No, no. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you my roadmap of how I would love it from the Anthony Joshua perspective. I'd like to see him victorious against Francis Ngannou. I would like to see Usyk put on um, a win against Fury. I would also like to envision that AJ and Fury can get it on at Wembley and I can pray that, not pray, I just hope that Wilder and AJ could get it on somewhere in Africa. This fight could have been in Africa as well, but we got to go where where the, the offers come from. So I just, I just want to see the big fights. I just want to see the big fights. So I'm excited for the Bivol fight and all these other fights that have been difficult to make, these undisputed fights over the years. I want to see the, the best fight the best and see those belts all on the line. So yeah. Likewise, any last words before I let you go? Shout out 258 Management, always. Top man, thank you for your time. You want anything bad enough? Don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it.